Hello guys, welcome to the next session of developing e-commerce application from scratch using Angular and Spring Boot. In the last session, we discussed on how we can create one Spring Boot API so that we can add product into a cart. So we have seen uh, all these like API related information in the last session itself. In this session, we are going to work on Angular part, which is our UI part. So in this session, what we are going to do is we are just going to add one button in uh, like in front of this buy now button so we are going to add one more button over here which will be saying like add to cart so whenever user will click on that button then that particular product will get added to users cart so this is the functionality that we are going to implement today's session so again if i just go to the postman let me just quickly show you how our api works so that it will be easy to understand so first we must have to log in in order to use our uh, API which is uh, in order to use our add to cart API so we have one API which is called as a authenticate in a body we have to pass the username and password and whenever we will click on the send button then it will like if username and password is correct then we will get the success response and in that response we will get one JWT token as well this token is really very important because uh, like our add to cart product API uh, basically uses uh, basically uses the JWT token to fetch the user details and to save the uh, product into a card. So it basically uses JWT token to do all these kind of operations. So that is the reason JWT token is really very important. And then next thing that we have to do is like uh, if I just show you the URL completely. So we have localhost 9090 slash add to cart and then this particular one is nothing but a product id so we are just sending the product id in the url itself so this one can be anything but as of now in a postman i'm just using one and then alongside in the headers we have to pass our jwt token so let me just show you how it looks like so let me just use b error and then let me just give the space and let me just give my jwt token something like this and let me click on send button let's see what happens so yes, we got the success response. So we got the cart ID, which is 78 as of now. And alongside we got the product details and alongside we are getting the user details as well. So if I just go to the last, then we are getting the user details as well. So this is how our add to uh, cart API basically works. Let's see how we can use this particular API from our Angular side. So if I just go back to the Visual Studio code, and the next thing that we have to just do is we have to go to the product view details component inside the product view details component we have to go to the html file inside the html file we have one button which is buy now button in similar way we have to add one more button so let me just copy the buy now button and let me just paste it something like this the next thing that I'm just going to do is I'm just going to remove this particular color is equals to one. So I'm just I don't want any color to my add to cart button. So let me just remove the color and let me just remove the click event also because as of now I just don't want to I don't want to have any kind of click event. In a moment we are just going to add it back. But as of now let me just remove it for some testing purpose and let me just remove the text as well and let me just add add to cart something like this and let me just save these changes let's see what happens so if i just go back to the google chrome then we are able to see one button and uh, in front of the buy now button but only one issue is there like buy now button and cart to add button they are completely uh, touching each other so we want some space between these two buttons so to add the space let me just go back to the vs code and after the buy now button let me just add and nbsp something like this and now let me save these changes let's see what happens so yes whenever i am sa saving the changes yes it is giving me giving some space it in between this buy now and add to cart button so it is looking perfectly fine the next thing that we have to just do is we have to add click event on this add to cart button so if i just go back to the vs code let me just add click event something like this and now let me just give the function name as let's suppose add to cart and then we have to pass the product id itself so product id is stored in this product object that we are 
just using for the description and name so same product object we can use so we just have to use product dot product id so let me just paste it like product dot product id something like this and now let me just save these changes now over here we are getting one error and which is quite obvious because this particular function is not created so we have to create this function so let me just copy the function name along with its parameter and then let me just go to the product view details dot component dot ts file insert inside this ts file let me just paste my function name and let me just give some curly brackets we don't want this product dot product id so let me just remove product dot something like this and we can just keep only product id as a parameter name the next thing that we have to just do is we have to just make sure that we are like whatever product id we are receiving that product id is correct and just to make sure it i am just going to use console.log so that i can just take a look on my console so let me just open the console and as of now in the url if you just see the product id is 3 so as of now let me just click on add to cart button and on the console also we are getting the product id as a 3 so whatever product id we have selected that product id itself we are getting on the console that means our function is working perfectly fine so we don't have to worry anything from that point the next thing that we can just we can just do is we can just use our api and we can just send like whatever product id we are receiving over here we can just send the same product ID, product id to our api so in order to do this we have to just add one function in our product service so let me just go to the services folder and let me just go to the product.service.ts file then what we can just do is we can just add one more function like public add to cart something like this this function is going to take one parameter that is product id and then let me just give the curly brackets then we have to just use return then this dot http dot get and then we have to pass our url so my url is http colon slash slash localhost colon 9090 slash add to cart and then we have to give one more cell more one more slash make sure you are giving slash at the end and then whatever product id we have received we have to just append that particular product id so we have to just give plus and then product id something like this now let me save these changes and now let me just come back to my product view details dot component dot ts file in a constructor we have not injected our product service so let me quickly inject the product service so let me just use private product service which is of type of product service product service something like this and then let me just remove this particular console.log instead of this let me just use this dot product service dot add to cart and then we have to just pass product id and then we have to just subscribe to it now in this subscribe we have to give two sub two like callbacks one is for the success response and one is for the error response so first of all add one callback for success response so we just have to use response in a bracket and then we have to give arrow and then we have to give the curly brackets let me just use console.log and let me just try to print my response something like this on similar note let me just add error response as well so let me just add error callback and let me just use console.log error something like this and now let me save these changes let's see what happens and if i just go back to the google chrome let me just open the developers tool again and let me just open the console again and if i'm as of now we have selected product id 3 and if i just click on the add to cart button then on the console we are getting the su success response and we are getting the cart id which is 79 now if i just go to the my sql and if i just try to refresh my cart table then we have product id 79 and uh, uh, cart id as a 79 then we have product id as a 3 and then we have username as a varad 
so this particular username is getting fetched from the jwt token and that that is the reason we must have to log in in order to add any product to a cart so now if i just go back to the chrome and if i just click on logout button and let me just do one thing let me just now let me just try to select any product let's suppose let me just choose any different product maybe let's suppose let me just use uh, product id 35 and then let me just try to click on add to cart button let's see what happens so if i'm just clicking on add to cart button on the console we are getting the exception that is 401 unauthorized exception and then it is redirecting me to the login page so it is saying that in order to add any product into a cart you must have to log in so now if i just try to log in to a system and if i just go back to the home page and if i just now select any product let's say product 33 and if i just try to click on add to cart button so obviously we are as of now we don't have any alerts and anything that is the reason we are not getting any kind of a message on the screen like product is successfully added to a cart but if i just go back to the mysql and if i just try to refresh my cart table then if you just see we have one new entry saying that cart id is 80 product id is 33 and username is varad so we are successfully able to uh, add the product into a cart so as of now one thing that is noticeable is as of now we don't have any kind of um like alerts or maybe any kind of pop-ups so that we can inform the user that product is added successfully into a cart but as of now i'm just not going to add it because like in the upcoming sessions we have some different plans so that we can like uh, we are going to add one more uh, screen over here which is like show all cart items so whenever uh, user will click on add to cart button and if it gets added successfully then we are going to redirect redirect user to some different page that is the reason i'm just not going to add any kind of alerts or anything as of now so in the upcoming sessions we will handle all these scenarios so don't need to worry about in this uh, from that perspective so i hope you got an idea around this like how we can implement ui changes in order to add any product into a card if you still have any questions let me know into a comment section and i will try my best to help you out in that case and i hope you enjoyed this session and i'll see you in the next session.